And then when everything's done and set in stone, you want to power down. Just hit the power button to make sure. It should power down. Now, I don't hook the data cable back up or anything just yet. I will now power back on from the remote. And it should go from TV analog straight to the HDMI source. So now we're now hooked onto that. Now we'll go back over to the back. Make sure that the, the data cable is plugged into the appropriate data slot on the back of these dish boxes. Make sure it's set to MPI slash MTI. Because I know some dingleberries decided they want to put it in the LAN and that does not work. So you want to make sure that's all set up. Now I've got multiple remotes here, but this one's just a random one, not the one for the room. I'm able to turn the volume up and down. And I wish I could power up and power down, but I'm not going to do that just yet. The channel, I can definitely switch channels, can scroll through whatever is available. And then, just for poops and giggles, we'll power her down. Red light to appear. And then power back on. Now, for some or whatever reason, if and I've went over that before, but if it doesn't, if you can control the channel and the guide and all the other buttons, but volume and power, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold SAP, which is the SAP button down the bottom left of the remote, and the number two. You want to hold that down for a few seconds. We'll see a couple flashes and then power off. Now, what that basically has done has now hotwired the remote to work with the, t the Samsung functions. That's to also, the, it, theoretically, the first option should be good enough, but if not, that's the follow up. And now I can control everything just as I did before. It's, it's really slow right now for some reason. Cool. I have no regrets. I had a lot of fun doing it. But we're all good. It was so. a tasty and beautiful looking dish. We are expecting...